postponed because it was going to be a abbreviated service tonight anyway, so my comments are short because uh, in a few minutes we're going to break and uh, have a wedding. But, you know, being a pastor, I can't pass up the opportunity totally, right? Amen. So, as you see back here tonight, I said three things about God's grace. We spent a lot of time the last month talking about God's grace. And, and I think uh, maybe always in studying, I find that I could use God's grace and I could certainly administer it a lot more than I do. Um, so tonight I just want to spend a few minutes, and when I say a few minutes, we're going to be down here in eight minutes. Goodness gracious, I'm going to write this date down. Yeah, so be quiet, Joe. Yeah, Joe, so hush so I can get through my eight minutes. No, but uh, we have been. We've been talking about God's grace a lot. Uh, perhaps aspects of His grace that, uh, 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 and, and again, just a few minutes, uh, I just want to touch on three quick points. Uh, and perhaps these would be aspects of grace that we seemingly suffer to really duplicate in our own lives. Grace is, is, is a wonderful thing that if we'll allow it to transcend ourselves, to forgive ourselves and to forgive others, we would find that this world would be a lot better place to live. I'm just saying. Because we all hold a certain amount of errors about who we are, what we think we are. And in the eyes of God, Romans 3.23 told us that we are all sinners. Some people get offended by that verse of Scripture because they think, well, God's calling me a sinner. He's condemning me. No, what he was really trying to do is just level the playing field to say, you know what? Regardless of how you think of yourself, regardless of how we uh, uh, put on uh, sometimes errors about ourselves or what we achieve in our lives and we, you know, in our hierarchy of life, basic, basic number one rule of life is that we are all equal unto God. And that's a fact, uh, fact that I can definitely tell you is true by the Word of God. Um, and I know many times... Uh, we've assured ourselves by the Word of God that not only grace is available, we talked about this weekend, but currently from God it is enormously abundant. Mm -hmm. That's the beautiful part about grace. I see people struggling with life, I've struggled with life, still struggle with life, and forget that there is an overwhelming universe, and I'm not speaking fruity tooty, I'm speaking factually, there is an overwhelming, enormous amount of grace that's applied to every person in this world. Uh, and that has to be true uh, because uh, it shows that God has a great patience with all of us, every one of us. I mean, it even shows grace to those who don't, not only don't believe, and when you think about that, not only people who have really never thought about God, but also those that absolutely deny His existence. Because if it wasn't true, then He could just snap His finger and take them out, right? I mean, that's the level of grace that He allows. So when you think about what God allows us for grace, then think about how limited we really share grace with one another, right? I mean, we have a God that accepts the absolute rejection of us to Him and the gift of His Son to us to cover our own salvation. And yet, He still allows them grace. So, real quickly first, number one, let's consider grace refers to the goodness of the blessings that flow from God that's available to all people, every people, all, all of us, whether they are believers or unbelievers. And again, as I said in Romans 3.23, it's not a condemnation, it's, it's a level in the playing field to realize that we're all equal. You, you can paint it how you want to, you can think of yourself how you want to, but on that last breath, on that last moment, you will come to see Christ. And when you come to see Christ, you will realize who you are, whether you want to admit it or not. I mean, that's the fact of life. So uh, that is why it's so important that we learn grace, not only from God through Christ, but to allow grace to one another, right? To really, I mean, this, this is something we could all pray about. I, I mean, I know I can improve on it. Uh, I'm very graceful with Barb, but I'm still praying that she'll have grace with me more often. I'm just saying so. But here. <laughs> I get in trouble with that every week. But think about this, uh, God's instructions from Matthew 5, uh, verses 44 through 45. It said, I, but I'll tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you that you may be children of your Father, that you may be children of your Father. His cause, the, his, he causes His Son to rise on the evil and the good, and He sends the rain on the righteousness and the unrighteous, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, think about that. We're not even talking about a, a grace, a level of grace that extends beyond friends and family and church members and, and, and co-workers, but actually extends to people that we don't even like. Right. And you ain't say that, but we have people that we don't like. Anybody? Mm -hmm. I'm the only one. I don't you. Yeah. I would tell you, but it's only going to be an eight-minute sermon. And see, that's the thing about fact of life. See, that's an intense grace that God allows us. There's, this is a big difference in God's <clears throat> level of grace in ours is that is, is this grace that he speaks to those, not only that we, that we don't like, but those who would threaten us and even would reject us. Those who would, who would be, to take harm to you. I mean, that's what he was trying to say in Matthew 5. Love your enemies, right? Wow. I mean... 
It's kind of humbling when you think about it. But quickly, number two, think about if God really treated us the way we deserve to be treated. That'd be bad. I mean, sometimes, with all sincerity, I, I tell Barb, if I acted the way, if she acted the way I do sometimes, I'd probably throw myself out of the house. She has a lot of grace to deal with me. I'm just telling you. And think about God. We See, well, we have that moment. We hold things on people. We hold things. We make these little comments. But the fact of life is, think about if God right now really removed grace from this entire world. We'd be gone. Yep. I mean, if you want to talk about it, we don't have time tonight because I'm down to four minutes. We're talking tribulation right here. So that's what's going to happen. We always talk about God removes the church. But what really happens during the tribulation oh, is God speak. removes grace from this world and allows us to be who we really are to one yeah. another. You do not want to be here. Right. Uh, so I'm going to say, don't have time. So that's another one. Think about that. Listen to this in Psalms 103, verses 8 and 10. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. He's a gracious God. Because if he did, most of us wouldn't make it through the next 45 minutes. <laughs> See, statements like this, I find are really humbling because sometimes, you know, I, I just hate to say it, I think the word is you get full of yourself, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you, you just think you've got all the answers, and guess what? You don't. Mm -hmm. But it's very humbling to believe with our opinions of ourselves and of all we do and how great we think we are, it seems we could express a little more grace to one another, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. not, not everybody has the experience that every another person has or has the, the life the other person has. And to be able not to, to condemn that, but to look at it and say, well, let me, let me share my knowledge with you or let me help you. Let me allow you some grace and forgiveness, right? And finally, number three, and perhaps the most important thing to remember, and the one thing that may get, a, I think, will get a lot of people in trouble in, in the end, is that God's grace will not bring you salvation. Did you hear me? Mm -hmm. God's grace will not bring you salvation. The past couple of Sundays, we've been on a verse in Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, and the verse tells us that grace abounds, but there is another critical component needed. Anybody remember what that component is? Love. Nope. Faith. Faith. Consumes love, definitely has belief, because again, we can't be saved just because of grace. Nope. See, at some point, you can, I was thinking about what a good example was. A child running back and forth, right? And you keep saying what? Jennifer, stop, 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 please stop, please stop, please stop, please stop. And yet, or he's bouncing a ball, right? Clicking a pin, and you keep saying, and finally, what happens? Boom, bam. <laughs> he takes a nap <laughs> see the grace ran out and, and see this is the part that concerns me more because a lot of people are playing with God's grace in their life right now and they have no idea that that's what they're playing with <laughs> Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 said for it is by grace you've been saved through faith and this is not of yourselves it is the gift of God not by our works so that no one can boast it is an absolute gift but you've been saved through faith. That means there has to be some skin in the game. That means this is where it leads you back to the fact that you have to make the decision sooner or later whether or not you actually believe there is a God. Not just in the middle. I, I, oh, I think there's a God. But when you believe in your heart and all your mind and soul that you believe that God is real. And that's what he told us in Romans 10, 8, 9, 10. That if you believe with your heart, confess with your mouth that Christ is risen from the grave, thou shalt be saved. But see, at some point, that grace, that's my concern. And it's, it's a two-way concern tonight, in closing real quickly, is that, it's, see, it's that fact of life. It's our job to help people, through grace, understand the grace of God. Because if we have the knowledge of life and we don't share it, then we do the biggest disservice that we can. But see, that grace to believe faith means that we, as we discussed it, uh, the grace is available to everyone, regardless of whether they believe it or not. And it's the same grace but it's not true until salvation unless you believe. And that you actually believe. So when you think about this tonight, for those who have repented and believe in Jesus for salvation, which means they have basically, I love to just think about the fact they finally come to God and said, wow, I finally realized who I was. Right? Huh? Right? I was thinking about that last night. I woke up and I was looking in a mirror. I was thinking about if you were looking in a mirror, you always see who you're looking at, right? But you also see the things that, if you look long enough, you'll begin to see the things that you are not. What brought the father's son back home? 
Amen. Finally saw who it wasn't, right? And then he got to thinking about his father where he was. Can't go down that road, now you're going to pull me off. Right? I, I'm, I'm two minutes over my goal. Therefore, those who have repented and believe in Christ for salvation, the grace will be applied to the life. But the sad part, for those who haven't, there is no further grace available upon that day. See, they will pay the price for the sins, and that's what he told us in Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin are dead. Right? See, the grace of God that's so abundant now, that is so abundant all over this world, you say, well, how can God allow these things to go on? Who's doing them? We are. And God, even, even to the worst, has allowed this the grace of life and choice to go on for all this time. But there is coming a time by the biblical uh, prophecy that that grace will expire. And this is why, folks, we need to do our best to show grace, and not only uh, not only uh, to each other, but especially to those that do not know who Christ is, because that is the grace that we get to allow. Because grace without believing is a dead man's grace; it absolutely is. Amen. 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 Father God, thank you for this quick word tonight. As we move to the next uh, part of our evening, we just pray that you will allow us grace uh, and and. Uh, forbearance God and we thank you for this opportunity this it's this exciting time in our church to to uh, to come together and celebrate this evening thank you for all that you allow us father God if there is someone here tonight that doesn't know you I pray that they would ask and ask to receive and they can do that with you God right where they're sitting and I just pray God that you would you would uh, open their hearts and their ears to hear the truth in Jesus name I pray amen amen, amen. okay at this time